Are we good? Mm-hmm. What do you want to talk about? I'll talk about a few things. Let us know. Are you wanting to talk about the new Ace Jig colors? Yeah. That's what you was wanting to talk about? Yeah. Lots of new colors in the Ace Jig. Going to be some updates to the Apex Swim Jig also, but a lot of really new colors that are viewer inspired. Everybody pretty much asked for these colors, or there's some stuff that we've had in the hopper for a while, kind of wanting, like the, this magic blue crawl. That's something I throw in the, in the fall whenever those fish get eaten on those crawfish that are like green pumpkin and blue. But what else, Hunter? That's the new colors. colors. You didn't even tell us what colors. That was magic blue crawl. There's lots of new colors. Magic blue crawl, candy we'll grass. Magic blue crawl. So this is actually a green pumpkin with a blue hue to it, which those crawfish get like that a lot this time of year. And then we've got a, I mean, not this time of year, but like early, late summer, early fall. So when they get there, got a blue gill color. What's this color called? Magic gill. He don't like that one. Babies don't like it. Maybe bass do. But 10 new colors, including a pepper shad, four skipping around docks and a shad spawn, stuff like that. Like lots of colors. Peanut butter and jelly, that's a tried and true color for a lot of people. But anyways, Hunter wanted to talk about a few things. Yeah. We went through, that's about half the jig colors. I know that ain't what you set me down here for. No. So what, what, what are we, this looks, this felt serious, you know? So it's about to start the Elite Series season. That's the juice right there. That's my stuff. Ace head, a little bit of fancy smancy on there. And anyways, Hunter, you said they're about to start the Elite season. Are you ready for the classic? Yeah, we're always ready for the classic. That's like a, just super cool to have that opportunity, you know? You're gonna have to make a speech. Practice almost right. <laughs> what are you gonna say? I am gonna have to make a speech. What are you gonna start off saying? So, this is counterintuitive, but I have a YouTube channel, but I'm not really a public speaker you at can, all. You can talk on stage very well. I don't, but I don't know, it don't feel very well. Like it feels, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I had to re I might reach out to my buddy Swindle and, and uh, give some advice on public speaking. Even though I can't emulate what he does, don't even want to, but he's got, not that it's a bad thing, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I know you, I can't be that. But uh, give some advice from him, from OG man. What do you want to say? Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool because I want a lot. No, I just want to say thank you. Like, like Untamed Tackle. <clears throat> I've been with them from my rookie year literally for my rookie year striker ever since my hoodie? ever since my rookie year i've been with striker same with sunline i signed with gamakatsu at the end of my rookie year i mean that's a uh, food i've been with fuji since my rookie year literally like crazy and they believed in us yeah and then we won a lot shout out to jim i seen he passed away this year but he's from fuji and uh he, he worked at angler's resources and he's the one who really he's the first person who really was like I like you, kid. You know we're gonna we're gonna give you a little bit and help you out. And I mean, it's shout out to him because he's literally the first person to ever give me a significant sum of of money and support, and that that is that's huge. But that's all. That's all I'm really gonna probably say is thank you to everybody. You know, even the guys I came, I got on with late, later. You know, thirteen Rapple, Crest City. You know, a lot of those companies that where later ads still means a ton because they, they believe in me also just as much, you know, and that's, that's really important. You know, it's cool how proud they were of me whenever I won AOI and everything. But is that what you wanted, Hunter, was just to make me stress out about giving a speech? I'm not stressed out about it. I'm excited about it. I'm that. excited about the classic. Definitely excited about the classic. It's going to be fun. That'll... It's, it's more exciting this year because we didn't get to go last year. Yeah. The, uh... It seems more like... You know, yeah. you can't take that stuff for granted. I know, and I never have. I've always really enjoyed them, but I, I'm so competitive that I want to do well. And a cl classic week for me has always been kind of the same as an elite week. Like, I'm still, like, running hard as I possibly can to do as good as I can in the tournament. It's not just get there and enjoy it. Like, from the very first classic I fished on Ray Roberts, like, I practiced for that tournament to win. I had the bites to do extremely well in that tournament. I was on a really, really good system of how to fish that lake and i just execution killed me in that one and then obviously the second classic i fished execution killed me in that one even worse no, it didn't. <laughs> what like you did well i did I, well you did well enough to win 
I did well, but uh, you know, I had the bites to where it shouldn't even have been close, you know. And if if you leave it on the table, I didn't fish a winning tournament. I fished really, really close to a winning tournament. But if I execute and ca and get fortunate and land every single bite, it's not even a close tournament, you know. So that I left it on the table, then you know, made it that close because I had a lot of mishaps and things go wrong and some of it was me pulling a, pulling a bait away from them and stuff and barely hooking them and I should have just gave them a second to turn and you know but I do that same crap fishing four buck tournaments you know like I I get jacked up for bass fishing like I, I love bass fishing and tournament bass fishing and the classic is just fun. That week is exhausting. It is exhausting um, mainly because of the hour and a half drives back and forth. Ray Roberts, extremely exhausting. Hartwell, not as bad. And it's very demanding. Like you always gotta be somewhere. You gotta be somewhere. You barely got time to rig. It is. It is tough. But I, I mean, I want to go every single year. I was listening. You know, when when they announced some of these people, like Swindle, twenty times to the classic. You know, I can tell he's been twenty times or something. You know, like twenty, maybe more than twenty. I don't know. Clun's been eight hundred and seventy-six times. Like it just, it don't even seem possible to go that many times. You know, like I hear guys that have qualified eight or nine times for the classic and I'm like, God, that's a lot. And then you hear some of these veterans that's qualified 20, 800. 20. Like, like it's unbelievable how many times, like how hard it is and that they've been able to do it that much. But my hat's off to them. Like it's, I hope I'm there one day. I hope I've qualified for 20 classics whenever I retire, for sure. So the Elite Series, which tournament are you most excited for? I'm most excited for the Florida ones because we're going to Florida a different time of the year. It's, you know, I'd be excited for a lot of them. I'd be, I'd be, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night knowing we're going to Toledo Bend and Fork in February if we didn't have to forward face the sonar. I literally wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Like, I would be so jacked up to go to Toledo Bend and Fork if I got to fish, you know, the way the ways that I love to fish, you know. But, still going to be fun. Definitely still going to be fun. It's just not what keeps me up at night. Are they going to be bed fishing? No. No. It could be. It could be a few, but... What tournament are you most nervous for? Most nervous? Smith. I've only fished Smith one time. It was in September. I actually had a had a good result, and uh, felt felt like I think I came in fifth in an ABT Open there, something around there. I felt like I underperformed what I had found though. Like I weighed in five over a large mouth, one big one, you know. But like I felt like for what I had found, I didn't catch them as good as I should have, you know. But Still, still had a good tournament, you know. Still was very fortunate. I mean, any of those fish could have been a quarter inch shorter, and you know, I have to weigh in a small spot of bass or something, or you know, what, whatever I had. So, I mean, I think spots got to be 15 inches too. But anyways, I remember there was something. Maybe there's a slot limit on largemouth, and you can weigh in like 12 inch largemouth. Maybe I can't, I can't remember. But I remember culling a very small one right at the end of the day, and I don't remember how I had the small one in there because I feel like it got to be 15 inches. Maybe I just didn't call a very small one. I just called a skinny one or something. But anyways, I didn't have good. I didn't have that much weight, but I had really good weight for that time of the year. Miss winning by a couple pounds, which would be would have been one more big one. But you know, I'm most nervous about Smith. That's going to be <sighs> surfing the USA probably with all the weight boats. You know. What time of year is it? I think it's in June. I need to pull up the schedule. Also, well, let's talk about this free book schedule. Do you feel like you're going to get redemption on St. Lawrence this year? And is it keeping you up at night? Like, what happened? Do you feel like you missed a, your win opportunity? No. <clears throat> Do you feel like you would have won if your boat did not break down? If I'd have went into that tournament in a different position and did not have boat issues, yes, I think I win that tournament for sure. Like, I feel like with what I had found, I win that tournament. But that doesn't matter. 
that stuff you can't control. Obviously, the final day, if I get to go and fish for a, for a full you know, tournament day, I still gotta go catch 26 pounds. And that's hard to do. But, you know, I left a lot, on, a lot of meat on the bone on day one. I, I, I definitely could have, if I'd have been pushing trying to win the tournament, instead of trying to win AOI, I would not have left my spot as early as I did. I left with a three and three quarter. I had 25, 10, and I had a three and three quarter in the boat, but I already had a really good weight. You called in the river though. I didn't call in the river. Not on day one. I called in the river on day two, uh, but I barely called. Cause I already, like on day two, my smallest fish was a five pounder. And I called with a two ounces basically in, in the river. So I called another five pounder, but you know, it barely, it barely called. So anyways, that's besides the point. But no, that does not keep me up at night at all. That's stuff that you can't control. Now, three years ago on St. Lawrence River keeps me up at night because I made a boneheaded decision, terrible decision, probably the worst decision I've ever made on the elites and learned from it. And that might've helped me win AOI. Maybe not, I don't know, but I learned from it. And hopefully I don't make another decision that bad, but that was one of the most atrociously terrible decisions I've ever made. Terrible. Like I, that keeps me up. I still think about that and want to slap myself because that is, that was terrible. Are you going to tell us what it is? No. 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 Because I'm still embarrassed by it and I'm super mad. But I, de I decided, I had one really good practice day fishing a certain way in the river and I had a really long day. I was out of contention for AOI because I had a, some mishaps at Champlain, fell down a lot of places. We go to St. Lawrence, first day, make a super long run. I catch them decent, not great, but I was doing good in the tournament. Day two, I decided not to make the long run, fish close to the ramp, and I caught a lot of fish, but I caught a lot of little ones, and I think I weighed in like the smallest bag of smallmouth you can pretty much weigh in. I think I weighed in. 16? No. I think I had like 11. Did you? I think I had like 11. Yeah. I think I had like, I think I weighed in 11 pounds. Maybe less, maybe nine. It could have been nine. I caught two good ones off the bed, two th three pounder ones off the bed. So it was, it was probably like 11, but it just, I, I don't know. That one keeps me up at night. Like that's what keeps me up at night is, is the bad decisions. The mishaps, losing fish, breaking fish off. That'll keep like the classic from Hartwell. That I'm not bothered by it at all. But, you know, that's, that's just kind of kind of how, how I feel, you know. Bad decisions keep me up at night. And I've made quite a few of them since I've been on the elites. Been bailed, I've made really bad decisions and then been bailed out quite a few times. And then I've made really good decisions and had a mediocre day, you know. And that's just kind of, you know, that's all you can control, though, is the decisions you make. But I looked it up. Smith Lake is June the 20-something. That is going to be hot. There's gonna be so many people there. So many people there. Them spotted bass are gonna be running 200 miles an hour. So, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. I've heard people say that 10 or 11 pounds will get paid in two days. Do y'all know, that's gonna be Alabama in June? Oh Lord. Oh, I would. That's gonna be hot. I would be chomping at the bit. If it was June and not on the Tennessee River, and not on a herring lake. I would be so jacked. Like anywhere on the you Chattahoochee. On a small little local lake? A anywhere. Like put it on the Chattahoochee, put it anywhere, anywhere on the Coosa, anywhere. And I'm cool. Like I'm good with it. Smith Lake though. Whew. And and that's gonna be a tough time of the year, you know. Where where are we going you haven't been? Just Toledo? I've so I've been to Smith one time. I've been to I fished a high school state championship on Wheeler. It's the only time I've been there. Um, never been to Toledo Bend. I think it's probably it. So if We've been at it a while now, so I've been to most of them. Yeah, we haven't been to Grand. Never been to Grand. No. But. We haven't been to Saturn all day. What are we going there for, Hunter? No, isn't that like a lake? Yeah. I just know that that's the name of a lake. That's not an elite lake, though. Oh, it's not? Mm. Uh, I mean, like, it's a lake that the elites could go to, ain't it? <laughs> what are you laughing about? So, the cat, so Hunter just announced that a lot of people already know. I was 
not announcing anything. You did. No, I don't even know the schedule. Oh. I'm serious. Well, you, well, so, we're not going to Saginaw on the Elites. I was just naming lakes we haven't been to. <laughs> but we are going to fish the MPFL this year. I, I really, I'm not joking. I did not know that was even on there. Come on now. I, I cannot look at the schedule. Well, we've got quite a schedule this year. Lots of tournaments. And if people, anybody watching this that is from around the house knows how much I like to fish. Like, I might just show up randomly on, a, on any lake. There might be six boats there, and I'll be one of them that just shows up having a tournament. It might, my, it might be sleeting, 28 degrees, two <laughs> boats there. And, and I'm Kyle's going. going I'm, and I'm coming. But, so we decided this year to fish the NPFL. It's going to be really fun, you know. And it's, it's just kind of one of those things where I like to fish tournaments. And the schedule lined up perfectly. I've thought about fishing the NPFL for a few years now. Like literally probably since the first or second year. I've really toyed with the idea problem is I've had to miss I would have had to miss one every single year until this year so this year the first tournament that I'm going to fish first big tournament is actually going to be an NPFL on Logan Martin February the 1st and so I fished Logan Martin quite a bit whenever I lived in Birmingham you know for about there was a good little span where I fished it quite a few times you know N not really fished it much that time of year and don't really haven't really kept up with the trends but i know one of my buddies west logan's fishing it and he he knows them bass pretty well over there like he knows exactly where they get and what they do so that's pretty you know pretty excited though to fish the mpfl it's gonna be fun obviously now this is not me saying anything negative about the mpfl but you know my most of my thinking and effort that I put in outside of tournaments is going to be towards the Elite Series and the Classic. Like, that's fair, I feel like. Oh, man. It's storming. It is storming, but our power don't go out very often. That's scary. That's super rare. How's the lighting now? You can't see it. Can't see me at all? <laughs> How about now? All right, we got some artificial lighting going on. What is the rest of it? It's all artificial. Oh, that is true. We got we have a different type of artificial <laughs> artificial lighting going right now because our our power's out, which I don't know if our power's ever stayed out this long since we've lived here. It did it did one time when you were gone. Yeah. We were like in a night tournament. Yeah. And it I remember. And I was here by myself. I remember that. That was scary. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. What was he talking about? Logan. Logan Martin. Okay, and I said this is no shade to the MPFL, but all of my away from tournament effort is going to be in, you know, in you know map study and stuff like that for the most part that's going to be go towards the elites and the and the classic because i don't want to take anything away from, i don't want to add stuff that's going to take away from the elites but the cool thing is we've got one mpfl before the season even starts three after the elite series season is completely over and then some in the middle you know that are completely non conflicting so it'll be a really really good schedule i'm really excited to fish them a lot of really good fishermen over there a lot of really good guys a lot of nice guys that i've talked to since they found out i was fishing you know have reached out to me i've talked to some of them you know it's been it's been cool you know i think it's a it's always fun to you know meet new people and fish against new people and just kind of you know learn everybody's kind of tips and tricks because uh the more you talk fishing the more you learn from everybody you know and that's kind of that's kind of cool but did decide to fish the mpfl this year and actually kind of looking forward to some of those tournaments a lot you know like i think um we're going to hartwell in may i think that's going to be really cool i don't really know how they're going to be biting there i've never fished there that time of year but i think there'll be you know a mix of fish in a lot of different patterns that's going to be fun then we're going to uh, st john's river in september and i've been to st john's a few times now and we're going back this year for the elites in april but also going for mpfl in september and that's going to be fun that's going to be cool it's going to be completely different different section of the river i've learned the section you know that we usually fish in the elites decently well and i feel like uh, now i get to learn a completely new section so that's going to be fun but uh that's about it you know the elites are going to be i don't know if i've went through the elite schedule i went through the elite schedule Okay, so first thing we've got, this is where I'm fishing this year, you know, that's actually scheduled. I may show up anywhere 
at a random pot tournament. But we got Logan Martin, February the 1st. We've got February the 18th, Toledo Bend. That's an elite. We got an elite right after Toledo Bend, February the 28th through March 3rd on Lake Fork. We have the classic Grand Lake, March 16th through the 24th. That's So I write down the times where I have to be there. So that's 16th through the 24th. We have an elite on Harris Chain, the 7th through the 14th. We have an elite on St. John's, the 15th through the 21st. Those back-to-back -back ones in April, that's kind of some that I'm excited about. We have an elite on Lake Murray, starting May the 6th through the 12th. Murray, we, we went there this year, phenomenal lake. Absolutely blew me away whenever I was there. Unbelievable how many three pound bass are in that lake. Like it's unbelievable. So super excited to go back there in May. It'd be a little bit different, I'm sure. MPFL the very next week on Hartwell. That starts May 16th. That's the actual tournament day. So leave straight from Murray, go to Lake Hartwell. That's gonna be fine. Then uh, <clears throat> two weeks later, we have an elite on, that's actually three weeks later, we have an elite on June the 10th or the 16th on Lake Wheeler. So we all know how that's gonna be. It's gonna be a normal Tennessee River, um, you know, offshore. I don't know how, how much you can add scope in to that offshore fishing, but straight ledge fishing stuff, you know, that's a, uh, if I had to pick a weakness, that would be my weakness on, on the elite. So, you know, that's the one that I'm the least excited about. And then the one I'm the most scared of is the very next week on Smith Lake, June the 24th through the 30th. Two weeks later, we have an MPFL July 11th on Pickwick. That's gonna be that's gonna be kind of grindy, gonna be a kind of grimy, and gonna be very low amounts of fish caught, I think. But uh, still, gonna be some really really big ones. Gonna be some good weights caught. It'll be tough to catch five though, if I had to guess on Pickwick Lake. What end is it at? I'm not sure. For those, for like two months, we don't have to go far at all. No. We get to like stay close during the summer. Yep. That's be, awesome. It'll be pretty fun. Then we go straight to another elite on Lake Champlain, August the 4th through the 11th. It's almost the same exact time we was there this year. You know, that's going to be, you know, exactly the same as it was this year. So that's what I'm expecting anyways. We have another elite August the 12th through the 18th on St. Lawrence River. That is obviously one of the, my favorite places to fish for smallmouth that there's ever been. Like that place is phenomenal. The amount of four and three quarter to six pounders in that place is unbelievable. Now it's hard to catch five in a day that are over four and a half. Like it, it, it actually is. You got to kind of be on them to catch, you know, over, over about that 23 pound mark, you got to really be on them. But 18 to 22 is... Like there's so many fish in that place that are, you know, that four and three quarter class. And then e even like the 360s, 375s, you know, you catch a limit of, you catch three of the four and three quarters and then some three and three quarters. And then you're, you got a really, really good bag. You know, that's usually what it takes to be in, be, you know, in contention for the top 50 cut. So Do that. Do you think the cut weight's going to go down there because we're going out yeah. of Waddington? I, th I think it definitely will. I think it has to, you know, that's, that's my personal opinion. Then we got an NPFL on Hunter Spooler Place, Saginaw Bay, August the 29th through the 31st. I'm not, Kyle, I did not know. You didn't know I just was? knew that was a lake that MLF always goes to, like oh, the man. BPT that we've never been to. Yep. Like so, I've heard about it a lot. It's on Lake Huron. It's off of Huron. Oh, really? Yeah. So I fished Huron a time or two. Tell them about that scary time. That was the first time, it wasn't the first time. But it was one of the times that we was in some of the biggest waves, you know, I've been in. They, they were huge on Huron. I mean, eight footers probably. That's probably fair. We could not see. We were down in the middle of a wave and could not see either, either side. side. Yeah. They, they, they were really, really big there for sure. And, but it was, you know, I've been in big water now on Ontario a few times, three or four or five times. I've been on big water on Erie twice. And I've been on big water, been in big water on Huron once. So I've got, you know, probably 12 days now, I would say, where the, the waves are bigger than four foot, you know. Which out on the Great Lakes, that sounds absurd, but that's what they really do get that big. Like they get they get six or seven pretty regularly. Like like not every week, but like they get that big a lot. Like bigger than bigger than six is rare. And I think that day on Huron, they probably were bigger than six. 
Yeah, they, they were they were big. And then they, I went through some this year on St. Lawrence on day one that were definitely bigger than six. And I went through a lot. I went through five and six footers for miles. But you know, either way, that's fine. I, I will say this too. I can say this now that everything's okay. Kyle took me out on Lake Michigan, twenty weeks pregnant <laughs> in seven foot waves. I didn't even think about Lake Michigan. It was terrifying. It was big. I was so scared. It was big. And I just there. prayed for like two hours. But we went slow, and it was not bad actually. It was not bad. I was scared. It was big. It was big, and we didn't catch jack. No, it was beautiful. Beautiful. But then we found them that evening. Where? That evening. We went to a different boat ramp. And I don't think you went, but I went. Oh, I remember. And remember, I put the boat in the water and I texted you a picture like 10 yeah. minutes later. First place I put up and then we smashed them on, that, on, the, on the other region that we went to. But first place we picked on Lake Michigan, it was, it was I didn't, there was like no bass in and this we, one we region. We drove out to an island. We drove well, I was hitting all kinds of stuff, you know, just everything that I would normally hit. And I mean, it was just like this one area. There was no bass. Like I didn't even see none. It was just, there was nothing there. And then we moved to a different area and God almighty, they were everywhere. Good ones too. The first place we went out, I'm pretty sure like you're not even supposed to put a bass boat in, in this place. And there was like, yeah, yeah. They were like, all, all just the big boats, boats were like ships. Yeah. Yeah. But it made for a good story. Now we're telling the story. So it made for a good story. Yeah, and everything's good now, but I was still nervous. So, <clears throat> Saginaw Bay, August 29th through 31st. St. John's River, September 26th through the 28th. That's the NPFL also. And then an NPFL, Lake of the Ozarks, from the 23rd, 24th through the 26th. NPFL. So, three NPFLs after the Elite Series season is over. And that's where I'll be fishing this year. With, uh, you know, some sprinkled in, maybe a BFL or two. A Toyota series or two, lazy man or two, like all kinds of stuff. Whatever we, whatever we can get to, we'll get to it. So I mean, that seems like a pretty good schedule. Pick one MPFL and one elite that you feel like you could win. I'm gonna go St. John's for the elite in April. What? And then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go St. John's for the MPFL in September. How, isn't some of your worst finishes at St. John's? Yes, my second worst, or probably my worst finish ever on the Elite. Yeah, my worst finish but ever worst on the Elite ever. is on St. John's River. And you're picking that as your two that you could possibly win. Just because I feel like uh, I ain't gonna have to scope them, and that's ones I want to win. All right, can I pick? Yeah, you pick. Okay, I'll pick. I think Grand. Okay, that's, that's a good one. We'll take that one. And Pickwick. Pickwick in July. In July. I'll take that too. That'd be fun. I don't know how I'm going to catch them, but it'd be fun. So, that's where I'm fishing in 2024. We'll, uh, you know, had a baby. So, the YouTube video has not been, we haven't been posting as much as normal, but... It'll be fun. It'll be if y'all want to see him, he'll be in the next video. Will he? Yeah. He's the one that told me to fish the PFL, by the way. Yeah. He was like, oh, little Lincoln, he was like, hey, go fish him. I want to travel. Let's fish him. I said, okay, you're not going to cry. You're not going to cry when we're driving. And he promised he wouldn't. And now we're going, he's, we, we, so we're going to fish him PFL because he really wanted to. And he promised not to cry while we're driving. Yeah. So. Do y'all want to see the new boat? Do have the new boat. We will be doing... I guess we'll probably film it, post it Monday. Somebody come get this canis. <laughs> we haven't posted it for sale. We ain't posted it for sale yet. But anyways, <clears throat> new boat's out there. Rigged it today. And the bandit. Somebody come get the bandit. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on now. No, no, no. Ain't nobody coming to get the bandit. Ain't nobody coming to get the bandit. Somebody come get that four. I'm trying to give away everything. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you guys watching. That's where I'm fishing in 2024. We'll see y'all, I guess, Monday for the new rig.